gospel lesson today is from the Good News According to Luke, the 12th chapter. We're on page 91 in the New Testament portion of our Pew Bibles. Luke 12, beginning at the 22nd verse, do not worry. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom. And all these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here ends the reading of the good news. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I know many families have those special stories that sort of shape them or the stories that get repeated often. One of the stories that I heard shared many times when I was younger, growing up, was about when my dad was a little boy. He grew up in Minneapolis, a middle-class neighborhood, and their next-door neighbor was a woman who was very, very proud and very, very protective of her flower beds. One day, my then five-year-old father decided that he wanted to show his mommy how much he loved her. So he went next door and he picked a beautiful bouquet of flowers for her. He gave it to her and she said, Oh my, these are lovely, but where did you get them from? And so he took her by the hand and led her outside and showed her the neighbor's flower beds where he had gathered the flowers. She said, Oh honey, these are flowers that you must never, ever, ever pick again. We need to go talk to the neighbor and tell her what happened. And so they went and knocked at the front door. And the neighbor came there and they explained what had happened. As my grandmother tells the story, she says, that woman was as mad as a wet hen. She screamed at the top of her lungs as she looked at the damage to her flower beds. I'm going to spank your son. My grandmother said, oh no, it's my job to punish him for what's happened, not yours. And so the neighbor slammed her door in anger. My grandmother took my dad by the hand, walked him inside the house, and then took him to the inner sanctum, her bedroom, shut the door, my father was very afraid. He thought this was going to be very painful, and tears started to well up in his eyes. My grandmother reached down, wiped the tears away, gave him a big hug, and said, I love the thought of the gift you gave me. 
She went on to explain to us as she told the story. I had never taught him that he must not pick those flowers. So how could I punish him for something that he didn't even know was wrong? And then she looked at us and said, and why would I ever tell him that giving me flowers was a bad thing? I think sometimes, and maybe even more often than what we would like to admit, we are like that neighbor lady. We are overly proud and protective of our flower beds, whatever those may be. Perhaps we become overly protective, overly worried, overly anxious about things that we really can't ultimately control but we try to control them, and we try to be protective of them, and we try to make sure everything is just so. Personally, I find the words of Jesus in our Gospel lesson for today among the most challenging and difficult of Jesus' commandments. Do not worry about your life. I'd like to not worry about my life, to worry about my clothing and my food and all of those other things, but I do. I'd like to be a non-anxious presence in the world, but I have to admit that when I feel that certain pain or twinge and I go to see the doctor and I wonder what it is, I get anxious. I'd like to have a deep faith so that I wouldn't ever worry. But I must admit that I often have doubts and questions. I'm not a person of faith like I would like to be sometimes. And on top of those thoughts, I still have the gospel lesson from last Sunday ringing in my ears. For those of you who weren't here, it's the parable of the rich fool, the man who has his land produce a bumper crop so much that he has to tear down his small barns and build bigger ones, and then once everything is stored away, he sits back and says, take your ease, relax, you have a lot stored up for many years. And God says, you fool, this very night your life is demanded of you. And Jesus ends that section with the powerful, powerful reminder and warning. One's life does not consist in the abundance of one's possessions. It's good to be reminded of that. Even bigger is to be reminded that God is creator and we are creature. We are not in charge. God is. And as our loving creator, God has given us a place to live. A garden, if you will. Not the Garden of Eden anymore, but a garden nevertheless. A garden that produces an abundance. An abundance of food and flowers and blessings. An abundance. In fact, so much abundance that you and I and no one else could ever use all of it up. The problem for us is that God expects us to help take care of the garden. This is called stewardship. Here it is, he says. Take care of it. And we confuse stewardship with ownership. That's sin. That's where the greed comes in, and that's where our fears and our anxieties come in. And we start to think that we need to be proud of and protect and hoard these things. It's when we worry about our clothing and our food and our shelter. And all of this is really based in insecurity, based in fear. What if God doesn't provide tomorrow what God provided today? And so Jesus reminds us this morning, don't be afraid, little flock. Don't be afraid, believers in God, 
For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God's good pleasure. In other words, it gives God joy to give us what we need. And that includes not just what we need in this life, but the promise of eternal life. It is God's good pleasure. It is God's joy to have us pick from his garden, to pick from his flower beds. Not just for ourselves, although he wants us to do that, but also that we pick for the sake of others. That we pick those blessings and give them away like a fresh cut bouquet. When we are invited into God's presence, when we are brought into God's inner sanctum, if you will, we may be like a frightened, fearful child expecting punishment. Sometimes we expect punishment because we know we've done wrong, and other times the punishment comes because all of a sudden the light bulb goes on and we realize that we have done something we shouldn't have done. Oh no, I didn't know that was wrong. But regardless of whether it's willful or not, we often come into the presence of God and we are afraid. But all God really wants to do, you see, is wipe away the tears and give us a hug. To let us know how glad God is that we are his children. To let us know how much God loves us. To let us know that it will be all right. That we need not be afraid. And when God brings us into the inner sanctum and touches us and forgives us, hugs us and loves us, he does so so that we can be set free sent back outside, if you will, to go and pick more flowers and to give them away to those in need. By the way, the phrase in our gospel lesson, to store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, is code language. In Jesus' day and in the Hebrew culture, the whole idea of storing treasures in heaven was another way of saying to give alms, to give away to the poor and to the needy. These were treasures in heaven that no moth could eat and no rust could destroy. And in contrast, to store up for oneself treasures on earth is sinful. That is the way that we let greed take over, that we hoard things. It's like the story of the manna in the wilderness where the people were afraid God wouldn't give them more the next day, and so they would put it away and try to store extra, and it would become rotten and filled with worms. The same is true of God's good gifts that come to us fresh and anew every day. And so we are invited to be like God, to find joy in storing treasures in heaven, just as God loves it when we pick from God's garden to share with others, we are to find joy in our hearts when we pick from the abundance God has provided and share those blessings with those in need. This is being selfless rather than selfish. So, as you come to his table of grace again this day, as you come with empty hands, be filled again as you receive the body and the blood. Feel the hug from God. Hear the words, this is for you. And then after you have had your fill, go from this place renewed and refreshed, strengthened to pick the flowers from God's garden and to share God's love with everyone everywhere. In his name, amen. Our hymn of the day is on the white insert in your bulletin. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You may remain seated as we sing that together. <laughs> 